grab some pizza and then come grab a seat. We're going to get started in a second. Right now in Sydney, if you don't have a tech startup or if you're not an entrepreneur, it's like 20 years ago, it's, it was being a doctor or a lawyer. Right now, it's being an, an entrepreneur and that's, that's a hot thing right now. But man, I mean, what's, what's being an entrepreneur? It's getting someone to fund a crazy idea. It's this idea of disrupting old structures, worn structures, archaic ones. It's about starting things from the ground up. I've had so many people say to me, like I, I can't even count them, who said, oh my gosh, I had exactly the same idea three years ago. And I'm like, well, I made it happen, so take that. <laughs> now is a very exciting time to be alive. If you, if you don't have excitement, get out of bed and start doing things that make you feel good and excited because you won't have another time. If I've made enough money to live happily ever after, I want to be able to just sort of sit back and go, you know, today we're going to go, I don't know, explore the Amazon, and then tomorrow we're going to go and do something completely different. I want it to be like an adventure. It might be like Richard Branson, have my own private island or something, Necker Island, that'd be great. Everyone has an idea that they believe will shape the world or change the world for better. An idea that will make them a fortune. But for most, it stays a dream. How do you take an idea and turn it into a multi-million dollar reality? For some lucky few, the answers lie behind these four walls. Kick it off with Annie. Good morning, everybody. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Annie. I'm the co-founder of Miru D. It is absolutely my pleasure to welcome you to the third boot camp of Marudi. This is hard. They're about to get essentially a six month mini MBA, if you like, in how to run a startup, how to scale a startup, how to recruit a team, how to pitch, and how to find mentors, how to find investors, how to find advisors. It will be really hard work. And I'm Mick, I'm entrepreneur in residence here at Marudi. The startups we're working with today absolutely have the potential to be billion dollar businesses. Give yourselves a round of applause. You guys are our top 20. You've done extremely well to get this far. Miridi is like a, a sauna. <laughs> Tech startups do fail. Some of the businesses in here will not succeed. It'd be like walking into an area that, that's just really hot and everyone's around you and everyone's sort of applying pressure on you and trying to tell you so many different things. You have to be ready. Are you ready to commit to the program for six months? Are you ready to move to Sydney if you're from out of town? Because if you, your team and your business aren't ready for acceleration just yet, we will probably encourage you to apply again next year. I have to present it. It's such a serious thing for me. I don't like to do things badly. And so I don't want to be in a position where I'm not doing my best. And I think having lots of new stuff in there makes me feel a bit like, ah, uh, you know. I actually applied last year and didn't get in. And I, I, I remember when we didn't get selected for, for Moore D. It was like, you know what, Phoebe, f them. We don't need them. We're better than this. I think there were um, 14 of us at the end and they took 11. So <laughs> I was so devastated at the time. Don't worry about it. You're the best storyteller that I know. So what aren't you comfortable with? Like the way that some of these slides read now is not how I would do them. And so that's where I have to take back ownership of it to make sure that it's my language and my dialogue, because otherwise I'm going to just look like an idiot. But I think having been through it the first time, I knew what to expect, so I was definitely more prepared. Hi, everyone. I'm Phoebe from Our Little Foxes. Our Little Foxes. It's still a stressful process, meeting so many different people, pitching the business over and over and over again. 
Hi, my name is Jay. I'm from Uprise, and we are a service that reduces stress and improves performance in the workplace. I was surprised about how nervous I am, especially because um, we're a mental health program, and psychologists have the skills to be able to deal with stress. <laughs> Yeah, so Presello is the fastest way to take a product or service from impression to sale. So you would say how, how you do it, right? Every moment has that element of fear, uh, whether you're presenting, whether you're taking money off an investor, whether you're uh, jumping in and doing something completely new and outside your comfort zone, there's always an element of fear. My name's Steve Finale, I'm the CEO of Drive Yellow. We have a driver marketplace and logistics platform that's specifically tailored to deliver food. Uh, we could be called the Uber for food, but we're much, much more than that. This is my first foray into the startup world, into the startup culture. So for me, all of it is quite bewildering in many ways. Like there are some incredible companies here. I walked in and the first company I talked to, they're talking about sending like provisions into space, like creating like miniature cube-sized satellite things that send them into international space stations, right? We want to we wanna start an amazing space company and we want to take over the world. And we think this is the first step. CubeRider is a space engineering startup, and what we do is we provide a technology ride-sharing service to space that makes it cheaper to actually get any technology you want to build into space. Ever since I was in year two, I wanted to be an astronaut. Um, I, people told me it was a dumb idea. People said, oh, why don't you become a teacher? Or, no, I wanted to be an astronaut, and I didn't care what anyone else was going to say. I was just going to go and do it. I thought of the idea about last year and I contacted Solange and I said, hey, do you want to build some satellites together? And she was like, yes. <laughs> you know, exploring literally the final frontier, the universe, I think that is probably one of the greatest adventures anyone could ever do. Your pitching is everything. It's completely instrumental to the whole startup methodology, the whole startup world. I mean, you can have the best idea you can have the best solution. But if you can't sell your solution, or at least convince other people of your solution, then you've got nothing. More written content is produced today than ever before, and this written content needs to be edited. We want to revolutionize the way you think about how you get your work edited. Myself, Naveen, writer, editor, poet, and Jade, serial entrepreneur, together we have formed Polish to Publish, because we want to make sure that your stories are heard. Hard act to follow that one. Uh... <laughs>of the entrepreneurs in Australia are first-time entrepreneurs. And that's actually one of the reasons why we see an accelerator program adding such a lot of value, because bringing in mentors and giving them access to people who have been there and done it and got the T-shirt, so to speak, can share that knowledge and share that experience and help them to grow faster, quicker. This is not a charity. This is not a support group. They're building real businesses and the mentors are giving up real time and investing real dollars. They should be as tough as they can. No companies get in without mentor support. Um, yeah, absolutely. So I think be, be hard. So, uh, you know, if people cry through this process, that's maybe a good indicator that, that we've got more work to do throughout the program. So asking really tough questions is a great idea. There's companies here who are sending satellites into space. And there's a lot of that area of that business that I can't give them specific advice on. <laughs> With space, it's all old men that are like 60 years old and they're like, we know how to do it this way and you should be doing it this way. And we're like, no, you, no, stop. That first mission is the hardest one to get funding for because you don't have, uh, I think, a lot of light heritage, which you need to be taken seriously in space. What do you need to do to get into the air? Money. No, no, but specifically, you need a customer, right? Not necessarily. Like, so... Well, how are you going to get into the air unless you've so, got a deal? Is that a fair thing to say or not? I think yeah. you need a customer. I don't think you can actually do this without a customer. Space isn't meant to be hard and expensive and fill the 1% of the population. So that, that's part of what we're doing in, in Cube Rider, is we're showing people that actually anyone can, can work in, on a space project or a space program. Um, even down to 12 and 13 year olds who are doing our space program. Today is about starting your space mission training. Is anyone excited to go to space?
This is the first time Australia has ever been involved in the International Space Station. This is the first time, and it's you guys that are doing it. It's not the government that's doing it. It's you guys that are doing it. And so these are your space kits, which I'm giving you today. Have you, have you got an elevator pitch? Yeah, we want to provide a premium delivery service for the food industry. Uh, could, be, could be called the Uber for food. But we're much Don't do that. Don't do that. So Every, everyone wants that. to be the Uber of everything. No, right? I said so, could, yeah, be, yeah. could be called the yeah, Uber. Yeah, it could food, be. It could be. Uh, but we're not. Right. We're much more. It's much that. more. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. what's your goal for being here today? Yeah. What's the goal? The goal. The goal is to take us take us global. Right. Okay. That's the, that's the goal. I often say that a commitment to a startup is everybody. You've got to work around the clock, and you've got to have the the understanding and the support of a partner to allow you to do that. Unless you have a partner who is willing to go on the ride with you, you're likely to fail. It's not forever, right? It's the sacrifices we make now, we're gonna reap the rewards well later. I've already had that experience, you know, where I've grown a business, I've sold a business. Uh, I, know, I know what sort of rewards you can get for the effort. We think we've got a great Australian business that we can take global and we want people to help us do that. We, you, we can't do it on our own. Uh, we need networks, we need people, we need businesses, we need investors. We need a whole bunch of people, you know, so for all of that to happen, this is why we come here. So obviously we're looking at a room full of people where the statistics are against them, where there's a good chance that they won't make it through this first time. So I think if you are going to have a, uh, a position on where they need to change or what they need to change, you better help them with the solution as well. I'm based in Singapore. Yeah. Although you've worked out the driver solution, the cash handling solution, I don't know if you've involved yourself. The mentor sessions were interesting. You get so much access to so many people from so many different backgrounds with so much different experience, but all of them have been successful entrepreneurs in their own field. You know, imagine you end up in Beijing next week. <laughs> what the hell, what, what would you do, you know? Who would you want to meet? By the time we had to go in for the final pictures with Annie, I was just like, I was being bombarded with so much information. Like, it was intense. I think you could probably be a lot crisper on some of the slides. Mm -hmm. We're now at the point where they have to pitch to me. Five minute pitch and then five minutes Q&A. So they have to pass through the, uh, the Annie test first. Now here we are and, and we're delivering this pitch again to Annie and knowing that, you know, half of us are gonna leave, you know, from the top 20, only 10 of them will go through. So it was obviously high pressure. You know, some people feel pressure more than others. Some people feel pressure in different ways. For me, I like the pressure. I'm going to time this. When we get to five minutes, I will stop you. Sure. And it'd be great if I could see the slides as well. Yeah, we're just like it's working on it now, so... That's fine. You can just turn it around like that. That's easy done. And to me, not to the camera. Thank you. Yeah. I'm more important than them right now. Cube Rider. Come on through. So, where do we sit? Oh. I'm going to reset the clock and give you five minutes. Oh, wait, hold I on. will stop you at five minutes. Oh, wait, hold on. This is being a bit laggy. It's an old computer. It's going to take a few seconds. <laughs> oh, Seb. Yeah, it's happening. Oh, sorry about that, Sam. Never in the history of mankind has there been more written content generated than today. Yet it has never been harder for a budding writer to get their work noticed. Everybody writes because we all have stories to tell. A good friend of Mine knew Phoebe Adams, and we started working together, and the name of that company was 100 Foxes, which was an epic failure. Six months in that business and, and pouring money like left, about right, about and center, and, and no traction and no sales and no nothing, Phoebe came to the office and said, Lewis, I've got an idea. And, and we launched our little foxes. We, we launched our little foxes, and literally within 48 hours, we had customers. We had customers. We had visitors. We had customers. We had traction. It was unbelievable. What did that feel like? Success. So we're our little foxes. We deliver monthly craft and activity boxes to children aged 3 to 10. So I'm a mum, and I know for myself that I love to engage with my daughter in really fun, creative, hands-on activity. But I'm busy, I work full time and a half. That's creating a lot of mother guilt for me. I work pretty much around the clock. Um, always on my laptop at home when my daughter's in bed, sometimes when she's awake, unfortunately. But, you know, 
you, you have to love it to be able to commit that kind of time and energy and money and all of those kinds of things, and I do. Hey, Steve. Hello. Jeez, it's so noisy out there. I am a little bit of an older entrepreneur. Yeah, just, just... It seems to be a little bit of a trend of late that maybe a decade ago, that unless you were under 30, you weren't considered uh, to be a startup entrepreneur. All good. Beauty, in that case, over to you. Well, you probably had that experience of late cold food delivered with a grunt. We want to eliminate that experience from the food service industry. We could be called the Uber for food, but we're much, much more than that. Disrupting an industry like we're trying to do is a, is a really difficult thing. If I had said to you that, you know, three years ago in Australia, is there anything wrong with the taxi industry? You would have said, no way. I walk out on the street, pull my hand up, and I get a taxi easy enough. But if I say to you now what the deal is, then of course, you know, Uber have come in and, and they've restructured the way that we do business. They've restructured the way that we travel. So I think using that as an example, what Yellow's doing and what we're trying to do is that a lot of these people don't even know that they have a problem. And I think that's what tech disruption is all about. Why we want to be part of Mira D? Well, we want to be part of the cohort and that collabor collaboration. We can also can contribute to that collaboration, we believe, because of our experience. We want to build our network and bring people in into our, and to build a great Australian business to hopefully take it global. Ooh, minutes, literally yeah. well, about half a second over. <laughs> I think the success around being an entrepreneur is all about surviving. If you get knocked down, you've got to get back up. You know, no matter what, you get back up. So we're experiencing technical difficulties, unfortunately. Not with the satellites, with, um, <laughs> with a laptop. Yeah. Will this affect our chances of getting through to pitch because of the laggy laptop? Just always have a plan B. OK, swing yours around. Five minutes on the clock. Who's pitching? Ah, uh, me. Who's pitching? OK. <sighs> Some I know, I know. Are you going to computer? Oh, I can't run it on here. Are you serious? Hi, just open your laptop. Oh, God. Seb and I are like a brother-sister <laughs> relationship, actually. Space siblings. And that's probably uh, why we butt heads sometimes. Oh, okay. OK, five minutes. Over to you. Oh, Hello, Annie. My name's Sebastian. This is Solange, and we're Cube Writer. We aim to fundamentally disrupt the way humanity accesses and utilises space. We dare you to share your experiences, your findings, your passions, your fears, your intellect, your potential. We dare you to tell your stories, and our job is to get your stories noticed, to help you feel confident in your work, to help your stories be heard. You are allowed to breathe at the end of sentences. Yes. Couple questions. Yeah. If it takes a couple hundred thousand dollars or whatever it is to send something into space, how do you manage the cash flow for that? Bearing in mind, I'm going to imagine you have to pay for that up front. No. So, yeah. Well, you can send something up into space and pay for it later. We've got another five teams to do, so let's okay. just crack on. People might not realise how difficult it is to really be an entrepreneur. What a lonely journey it is. Man, it's working your ass off from 5 o'clock in the morning till 9 o'clock at night, seven days a week, huge amounts of responsibility, pressure, stress. How is this a technical kind of business? business? We know we've got a lot of work to do. Um, we have a physical product that isn't in its nature a technology product, and so um, we need to demonstrate that technology is a really big part of our business, and to do that, we need to do a lot of work. I'm about to put them out of their misery. Unfortunately, we didn't make it through the next round, but their reasoning was pretty much because we're just too early. It's the best news. <laughs> I think it just means that, you know, there's validation that our idea is going to work. No, no, it's all good. How'd you guys go? Good? Hey, hey, Mum, how are you? So we just got into Muridi. Congratulations. So we're in Muridi now for the next six months, and it's going to be 
the most it's gonna interesting. Be wicked. Yeah. It's going to be absolutely wicked. I think we're the youngest team here as well, so it's going to be interesting so. as well. It doesn't matter. Though. Accelerators are fantastic. If you get in, you get a lot of funding, you get a lot of help, you get a lot of mentorship, and at the end, you sell your idea. You have this idea of exiting. So when we were told no, obviously there's that element of disappointment because you're tired, you're expended, and then Annie comes up to you and says, unfortunately, you haven't made it. And so initially you're feeling, oh, damn, what was all that for? But acceleration, you know, you have to be at a certain stage and it's not for every company. Nice stretch it out. How's that? Welcome to Murray D, cohort number three. First day of Murray D, you're entrepreneurs, you've just got an accelerator program. What was going to change over the next six months? The stats on teams that don't make it, it's never that the idea isn't good enough. It's always the founders. I'm an emotional person, so I'm sure I'm just going to be crying every day. It is what it is. It is, I mean, the guy from the bread is saying that it was shit, the guy from everything was shit. And if you think we're being tough on you, some of the investors will be 10 times tougher, especially when they start putting money in the bank in your business. To get the best out of it, you really do need to ensure that you have the guts to take it on. Just a reminder, this is a full-time six-month program. For any of you who thought that you could sneak in through the front door of the program and then tell us that actually you can only do three days a week, we will ask you to leave the program.